Welcome back. This segment of the Sports Source brought to you by Games and Things. Life should be fun, so should Christmas. Christmas should be very fun. That means you should do your last-minute Christmas shopping at Games and Things. Look, it's, you're probably not going to grab a pool table or a shuffleboard table at this point, but dartboards, new pool cues, uh, poker sets, they've got it all. Big, small. Boss Toss is a new game they've got that's fantastic. It's like a combination of cornhole and darts. Games and Things. Corner of Lovell Road and Kingston Pike. Get out there this week. Take advantage of uh, all their great deals. At games and things, because life should be fun, and you can make Christmas fun by going there this week. Okay, take a look here at the top 12 in recruiting. Uh, this according to 247.com, 247sports.com and their composite rankings. Look, Texas and Oklahoma are only a couple of years away, so the guys they're signing – you're going to be facing them. So I've gone ahead and put them in orange there, too. You see where the SEC teams are. Alabama first, Georgia second, Texas third. You got Miami, then LSU's fifth, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Oklahoma's eighth, Tennessee ninth. Uh, Clemson right behind you. So another reason, if, if we're looking for importance in this bowl game, that may be it. Florida, 11th, and then Penn State, 12th. A lot of SEC all up and down that list. Uh, I'm going to hold off for Justin's comments because I know he's a huge fan of recruiting rankings. <laughs> but, Bob and Jimmy, here's my question. When you look at that, and, again, Tennessee got Arian Carter, a uh, mm -hmm. linebacker from Smyrna, Tennessee, this week. Kid grew up an Alabama fan. That's, that's a good pull. Mm -hmm. That's a good pull. Alabama wanted him, too. So this is kind of a jerk question, but I'm going to put it out here to you. I'm going to play the role that I'll believe the Grinch today. You got Nico, which was supposed to be great coattails. You got him with your new NIL, which you were supposed to have the big advantage on everybody else in the country. You got their firstest with the mostest. Uh, you were 10-2 and two this year. You were, you were pretty much in the playoff picture for the back half of the year. Is that good enough? Jimmy turns to Bob. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you and I have talked about this for years, that this is more of a, a road map and not a compass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or not a. It's a compass, not a GPS. What's the new thing they get? It's, they a, it's a compass, GPS, not, a not a GPS. It'll kind of give you a direction, but it's not. I'm I'm going to go with it's good enough. Uh, I mean, I think where Tennessee is right now, you know, is as much as you've improved, you're still not Alabama, you're still not Georgia. So I'm going to go with yeah, it's good enough, and it should put you on a level to take the next step. I'm going to say probably good enough. I don't mean to sound like Chuck. But, <laughs> and the reason is, it, the question. we all know it's an exact science, right? Yeah, absolutely. We've seen three stars play like five stars. We've seen five stars play like three stars. So, what I look at, typically, did you beat Alabama to get somebody? Did you beat Georgia? Did you yes. beat LSU? Yes. That means more to me than whether you're a three or four star or five star. So, Agreed. And you've got you, several of those guys this year that you, you went head to head. You Texas do. and Alabama. Right. Yeah. And, then, and then when you get them, you still got to coach them. So, that's a part of it, too. So, if you're in the hunt with that group, I don't think you have to be one, two, or three. If you're in the top ten, I think that is good enough. But you still have to develop them and, and make sure that they play to the maximum level. And one thing that I think is a positive is we've already seen two years, short sample, but small sample. This offensive staff seems to get the most out of the guys. They do coach seems, them up. They yeah. seem to coach them up. Now, go ahead. And one additional thing, of the 14 that came into practice already, nine or ten are defensive players. And I think pretty good defensive players. And that's where you need so, that's where you need it. Yes. All right, Justin, tell me about your love for recruiting rankings. As a former coach, you had to <laughs> you had to love that fans would sit there and pay attention to this stuff yeah. and grade your job and your evaluations uh, based upon what some guy at twenty four seven said. Yeah. Some guy that says, <laughs> Trust me, because what's the worst that could happen? Just trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's silly to me. You need good players. We all know that. Yep. But it's not really hard to evaluate good players. I can watch all the players that are signing with Alabama and Georgia. My wife can watch them and say, that guy's good. <laughs> it's, you're, you're evaluating who are those guys that are your three-star, whether they get four stars, five stars, or whatever, it doesn't matter. But those guys that are going to be the middle of your roster, the bottom part of your roster, can you keep them? Because every school on that list, whoever they don't sign – they're still recruiting right, them. Yeah. They're going to yeah. keep now, recruiting them. Yeah. And let's see of the people you sign, how many finish their eligibility at your program. And then let's go back and rank the rankers. No one does that. They don't have to be. They say he's good. If he, you can't get him to play, you can't develop guys. 
I look forward to the day that we get him and Ryan Callahan out here. Ryan is our <laughs> resident recruiting guy. He works for 24-7 Sports here. He works for Go Vols 24-7. Great guy. Uh, but we'll have he we'll have the two of you debate recruiting rankings. I look should be forward fun. to the gentleman's debate. It's <laughs> <laughs> not much different than uh, an NFL draft. Aren't half the first round draft picks end up not being that good? And that's thirty two yeah. teams. Yeah, not a hundred and thirty two teams. And, and look how much they study it yeah. and spend so, on it. Yeah. yeah. All right, very good. Uh, when we come back, an ESPN analyst unveiled his NFL first round projections this week. Wait till you see who he's got at number six and number eleven in the first round and then not in the first round at all. You're going to love this. You're going to love this. Come on back on the Sports Source.